Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 24th video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. We are in the middle of developing the move class and uh, you know there's been a lot of interest in seeing the game in action. Uh, you know folks have asked me when are you going to get to the portion where you build out the GUI and that will happen next but we definitely have to build out the move class which is really where the heart of a lot of the processing is going to happen um, in terms of you know sort of you know moving the game forward um, and I think we've made some good conceptual progress there's still a decent amount of code left to write in this class but let's see if we can outline it um, and then we will go into implementation uh, mode and we'll see how far we get in this video so Recall that I introduced this abstract move class, and it has one concrete implementation called major move with this execute method on it. What I want to do is I want to refactor this execute move and place it on the move class because this execute move method will be the same for several different types of moves. So let's see if first I can, the easy way to do it would be to copy and paste, but let's see if I can sort of do it using the refactor tool. Let's go to refactor, uh, migrate, there's got to be a move up, right? Extract, push members, pull members up. So let's try, it's going to take this and it's going to move it up and refactor. looks like it did it. So there's execute up there now and major moves down here and we have attack. So we, we have two concrete implementations right now, major move and attack move. Let's just sort of flesh out the different types of, let's just see them all and then we'll implement the their, their various, the differences within them uh, after we've introduced them. So we've got major move and we have attack move um, we will also have a pawn move, so let's go ahead and let's call this pawn move. Okay. Uh, then we will have pawn attack move. And what the difference between this will be so pawn attack move will extend attack move did I not get right there oh right because attack move expects uh, right, so what we need to do is attack move takes another argument. All right, I need to pass that in. That's not final. Um, hold on, I want to want to say that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Um, we also will have a pawn en passant attack. So, remember I said that there were some special moves, castling and en passant, which I would cover. Uh, so this is going to be sort of the introduction to these moves, these special moves, pawn on pass on attack which is going to basically be an attack upon attack move so this is not final and we're also going to have let's copy pawn pawn move wow this is a lot right 
pawn, pawn jump. which right now we will extend from move. But I think we can come back and refactor later. Pawn jump. And then we want to introduce, let's come back up here and copy for example, major move. <clears throat> Let's introduce a static abstract class castle move. And we will have two concrete subclasses, right? We will have two concrete subclasses, which will be, um, let's copy the one right above it. King side castle move. And This this will change. I just want to sort of I just want to sort of introduce these classes all at once, so we can get a, a high level overview of them. And queen side castle move. Okay. I know this is a lot. And lastly, we will have something that I call the null move. Just sort of an invalid move. So let's actually just paste. Oops. Sorry. So it's going to be called null move. It's going to extend from move. right and that I think is it in terms of the new types of moves so that's a lot guys check this out so right so we've got the move and for concrete subclasses we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay um, and a lot of these will be similar. What will be different is how they sort of print themselves out. Uh, it, uh, you know, and the convention we will use is to print our moves out in, uh, you know, PGN format. So um, if you're not familiar with that, what that means, you know, I'll cover it in, in a future video. But um, so that's what's going to be different. Like the two string override for a lot of these. Is going to be different, but their uh, execute implementation will either be the same or similar. Um, so, the last thing I want to do in this video is introduce a factory method, or it's a factory class that's going to have a method, a convenience method on defined on it. Move factory. So, not going to be instantiable. Um, and public static move create move board board final int current coordinate 
final end destination coordinate. So given a board and um, coordinate. Given a board and a from and to coordinate, I want you to uh, get me the that move that's available on the board. So it's going to say for final move, move in board dot and we're going to need to write all this method get all legal moves um, if move dot get current coordinate is equal to current coordinate and move dot get destination coordinate is equal to destination coordinate then return that move uh, and if you go through all these and you don't find it return null move and this is going to be something that we instantiate so let's write let's expose this method public int get current coordinate Turn this dot current coordinate. Uh, hmm. Wait a minute. Did I not have that? Oh right, I have to get it from the moved piece. This dot moved piece. It's piece position of the moved piece. And let's create the static singleton for the null move. So we will say at the very top, we'll say public static final move null move is equal to new null move. And if we come here to the null move, this will not take any arguments. And it will just, what we'll see is that it's going to take in a null, minus one, minus one. Right, oh, it only takes two arguments, sorry. Null and minus one. Um, let's see, extends move, move takes in a board, oh, right, no, that should do it, okay, for now, and the execute on this is just going to throw a runtime exception, so we can actually implement that really quickly public board execute Let's throw a new runtime exception and no, cannot execute the null move right and we're gonna need a way to return all the legal moves for the board, right? Um, by convention, that's what this is doing here. So let's go ahead and call create getter method on the board. And it's going to, instead of an array, let's say that it's going to be an iterable of move. And what we'll say is iterables. This, this is just these are. This is just a method that's defined in Guava. If you're not familiar with it, uh, iterables dot unmodifiable iterable iterables dot concat. I'm just concatenating. I'm going to concatenate this dot white players 
get legal moves with this dot black players get legal moves okay so it's just a concatenation of the white player and the black players legal moves we could have changed our convention to just get the current players legal moves and expect that we're only going to allow for the creation of a move for the current player that's another way we can and I might come back and change that um, so let's let's see let's just go with what I have now if I did it that way then I wouldn't need to do the whole concat business um, so right so I think I want to stop here uh, we've introduced the move factory and we've shown you all of the concrete subclasses of move but we haven't actually implemented them so in the next video we'll pick up where we left off and just walk through and uh, crank out all of these implementations then we should be done with the move class and we can finally start jumping into a GUI okay thanks guys